All right, so you've heard about 3D printers. It's like the first step to getting replicators from Star Trek, right? It's really cool stuff. And lots of things have been printed in the past, but nothing like this. On set with me is Cody Wilson, inventor of the 3D gun, the Liberator. Now, as you can imagine, printable gun uh, tech, you know, has gun grabbers up in arms. And so I've also brought Alan Gottlieb uh, onto, the, onto the program, founder of the Second Amendment Foundation, to discuss the legality of a, a printable gun. This, um, I, I want to start with you. This, um, Corey, this, first off, you and I were talking a little bit before we went on air just about the fact that you're in a fight right now because of this. You've been on the show before mm. and you were showing off the Liberator, which was really cool. And we were talking about how you get through the airport with that and <laughs> dealing with everything with the government. But you've been in a fight now for a couple of years yeah. with the federal government because they went after you because you put plans for this 3D tech, like basically how to create, you're not selling 3D printable guns, right. you're not uh, trading them, you're not sharing them with anyone, you've simply put up the, uh, the, 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 the directions, the recipe for the lack of a better way to put it, yeah. online so people can see exactly how it's happened, how, how it's done, and the government has come after you for this. That's right, yeah, and just 3D blueprints, so nothing nothing too different from the blueprints you're used to seeing for your whole life and for other kinds of objects. Right. Just that there was something so fascinating and, and captivating about 3D printing that the government felt it, it had to respond to what it perceived to be an affront with our kind of message when we, when we published the file. Right. That was two years ago. Two years. I haven't had the files up since, and I believe that the, the kind of letter that they sent to me was just one of these things where easy to send this, to, just to make me go away. But um, I took it as a, a challenge, and, and now I'm back. And you're based in Texas now with your company. That's right, Austin. Yes, ma'am. That's awesome, because you came, you were in Arkansas previously, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and now tough. you're here in, the, in Texas. I've had to go back and forth, you know. You, you run out of money when you fight the uh, all-powerful federal government. But, yeah, uh, I've, exactly. I've gotten lucky, so. But they, the, the thing that gets me the most, and we're going to bring uh, Alan here in a little bit, uh, the thing that gets me the most about this, well, in addition to the fact that, you know, they, they're, they're going after you for this, but they, they confiscated your intellectual property. They're going after your intellectual property, and you were telling me that they view that, like that's yeah. anything related to firearms, they immediately want to assert their ownership over this, which to me, that's massive. I think that's the best way to put it. So uh, one, I want to be clear, my company is nonprofit, and we, we publish our intellectual property right. into the public domain for the, the public to benefit from. So we right. don't claim the intellectual property ourselves. Instead, <laughs> who jumps into the vacuum but the United States government claiming that all the data that we generate from our private research and development is their exclusive intellectual property, and we have to ask them for permission before we can share it with the public. This is completely inconsistent with a country that claims to have both a first and a second amendment. Yeah, and and even though and what it's like two things because I was I was looking at I was looking at a couple of different things here, <laughs> so they, this is where I get confused even. So they're trying to say that, I mean legally they can't stop you from sharing blueprints, but they're trying to say that after it's printed that somehow like there's two different like regulations that no, are happening no, here. There's, there's a you were you're right the first time they they actually want to prevent me at the level of publication of the blueprints. They don't want they want to be the intermediary between me and the public getting access to the data that we generate. And privately. what's their excuse? What are they? <laughs> well, who was it? Chuck Schumer had said, we're facing a situation oh, where sure, anyone, a yeah. felon, a terrorist, can open a gun factory now in their was... garage. Yeah, because you're just a terrorist <laughs> gun factory. That's exactly what <laughs> you are. What you want. There's actually, this is some pretty apple pie stuff, right? There's nothing, there's nothing more American than, uh, than the garage shop of a guy who can make a gun. I mean, the guns won the West, right? That these right. are legal objects to own. We're not even talking about crime-inducing speech or crime-facilitating speech. This isn't the Pentagon Papers, which all good liberals know that they support. Right. This isn't something that interrupts national security. It's related to privately generated and privately generatable firearms. It's not Chuck Schumer, not, and it's not Chuck Schumer's problem that we're fighting against. This is a division of the State Department that says that all technology related to guns is their technology to administer and to control and to control the flow of. And this is so outside of most people's daily lived experience that, right, you're, you're struggling to find where is this even coming from? How is this, why have I never heard of this? Well, this is, in, in my case, with my company, this is one of the first times they ever publicly tried to enforce it. And I have to think it was because they had no other legal options available and they just couldn't let it happen. I want to bring in Alan because the Second Amendment Foundation has jumped into this as well. Right. Alan, um, appreciate you joining us uh, this afternoon. What I mean, what legal ground? I, I, I this story. I mean, it almost doesn't even seem real. And the, I, I wish more people were discussing it, especially the intellectual. I mean, all of it really, but especially the intellectual property portion of it. I mean, honestly, what he's not. He's not selling the things that he. He's simply putting up a blueprint. And I, there's nothing on the books that say he can't share a blueprint. 
Well, in this case, I think it's actually the blueprint's really computer code. And yeah, I mean, the government basically, what they're saying here is they're infringing on everybody's First Amendment rights, Second Amendment rights, as well as Fifth, fifth mm -hmm. Amendment rights process. We'd like to take Cody's work and put it on the Second Amendment Foundation website so that our members, donors, contributors, and the general public can learn about it. We can't even legally do that under the government's regulations. And this has been going on, Cody v. the government, for two years now. Um, what, what is there, what resolution is, there, I mean, are they, because are I, I just kind of get the impression that they just want to bleed everybody dry and drag this out until it's fait accompli, they win. Well, actually, what I think happened here is the government didn't really think they were probably going to be sued over this. They thought that threatening Cody with the letter they sent to him would probably back Cody down. It just didn't work, and they are being sued over it, and I believe we're going to win. I hope you win because I would love to be able, I, I, I just feel like, I mean, that's where, I mean, you can't stop technology and ultimately that's what the government is, is trying to do. And uh, what, have the, what have they argued, Alan, that it somehow violates, are they saying that it violates uh, it, like uh, international traffic for arms regulations or what are some of the arguments that they've thrown out? I can't even keep track of them anymore. Well, that's the main one they're claiming is that other people are basically in other countries can, you know, download these, uh, this computer code and create their own firearm. I guess, you know, like, you know, somebody in Mexico could do this. So what we're saying basically is I think the government doesn't want Mexico, want Cody competing with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Operation Fast and Furious. That's how silly and stupid this whole thing is. You know, quite frankly, improvements to technology should not be limitations on our Bill of Rights.